Hello and welcome to another video in the Open Computer tutorial series for version 1.3. My name is Lord Yoda and I'm here with Sangar, the lead developer of Open Computers and Daka Total, our cameraman. In this video, we want to take a look at the, well, basically big computers. So yeah, if one computer just isn't enough, so basically servers. Exactly. So in open computers, next to the basic normal computer cases, there's also server racks. And these are basically some extra special super duper block, which allows you to have up to four computers in one single block. And these computers are the servers. So servers are somewhat more powerful computers in that they are slightly higher tier based on the items they can hold. So to set up a server, what you do is you craft, well, you craft a server and then you open it. So put it in your hotbar and right click it and you'll see a GUI, which is similar to that of computer cases except that you'll notice they can pack more CPUs, which basically means uh, you can use servers to um, talk to a lot more components than you can with a normal computer case, because the number of components that can be addressed from a single computer is limited by the um, processor in it. So in the tooltip, it mentions how many components you can control based on the tier of processor. So setup is basically the same as for normal computers just put in your uh, components so the cpu the ram graphics cards whatever you need and when you're done with that you place down a computer case somewhere a uh, server rack somewhere sorry and put in the server so this is the server GUI. here to the right you see there are four slots these are for the servers and to the left there's some more stuff we'll talk about later the side to the right of the uh, server rack, uh, server slots uh, indicate to which side the server in that slot connects to the outside of the server rack, which is again relative to the facing of the server rack. So the simple ones are top and bottom. These will always be top and bottom. So left will be the left from the perspective of the rack. In this case, that would be here and right would be here. And this is important to uh, allow you to separate in which uh, component network basically the servers go into. So as mentioned before, you'll normally want to separate your computers into different subnetworks so they don't interfere with, you, with each other. So for example, if you have uh, two computers with two screens, if you do not separate those, it can happen that they try to access the same screen. screen the same screen the same screen per default um, the, basic, the same thing is true for servers so this is why you usually have to them separated on per side um, you can basically say okay i don't want them to connect to anywhere this is possible if you just have a, a standalone server which is just i don't know some network server serving files or whatnot and has a wireless network card in it for example but usually you want to adjust those to um, point to the correct side you want to interact them, have them interact with. So in this case, it's set to the top. So it currently has no power, so I'll just be cheaty. Um, so if I turn this on, it will turn on and I'll see the green indicator in the front telling me that it's running. And if I want to see something, I can go ahead and do it the same way as those computers. So as it's connected to the top, if I put a screen on the top, it will see that screen and I can then interact with the server using this screen. If I were to place this to the left here, it will not connect to the server because, well, the server is not connected to the right side of the server rack. So if I change this to the right, it will then see this screen and can interact with the screen. So that's how you basically get a server up and running, which is simple enough. And as mentioned, you can have up to four servers in the server rack. And that's the basics for that. So the other settings in the GUI, as mentioned before, to the left here are somewhat more in-depth. Um, the upper one we'll talk about later because it has some 
well, some prerequisites of knowledge about how networking works. The lower one is used for the remote terminals, which are an extra item, which are in this chest. So I'll just grab all of those. And these basically allow remote controlling servers. So these act as a screen and keyboard combo that is basically built into the server. So if I were to connect this uh, to the server now and connecting, as so binding a terminal to a server works by shift right clicking with the terminal onto the server in the server rack that you want to control. So now it's bound, which I see by the fact that it's blinking, but if I open it, I will see that there is no output to the screen. This is because the server is currently still bound to this screen and this keyboard. And if I remove those, now it should output some to this terminal, yes. So this then works just like any screen and keyboard combination, but it's portable and you can use it as long as you are in the range which is configured in the Rex GUI. So per default it's uh, 16 blocks, but you can crank it up to, I think, 400. But keep in mind that the higher this value, the more energy the server rack will consume per time. Um, now you can bind multiple terminals to one server. The number of terminals you can bind to the server depends on the tier of the server itself. So in the tooltip you can see for basic so tier 1 it's 2, for tier 2 it's 4, and for tier 3 it's 8 terminals. The main idea behind this was to allow multiple players to interact with a single server. If I do bind a second one to this, I will however notice that the output is exactly the same as for the other terminal. So they are not actual sessions on that server, every terminal displays the same thing. So I can give the second terminal to Yoda here, and if we open it, and I open it, and I tape something in it, he will see the screen changing. And the same thing, vice versa. Exactly. So that's basically how terminal, uh, remote terminals work. And if I move away from the server, over, well, let's just crank down the distance so I don't have to walk that far. So let's put it down to, I don't know, uh, I think, what's control plus? Yes, so up to four blocks. So if I walk away, it will tell me no signal. If I get closer, at some point it will tell me, yeah, okay, I can connect again. So that's that for remote terminals in the servers. I think that covers the basics, essentially. So servers are, like computers, they consume energy if they're running. So the more servers you have in your server rack, the more energy it will consume overall. Um, again, the explanation of what this setting on the top here does will come when we talk more about networking in general. Uh, like computer cases, server racks can be powered directly, so if you have other mods producing energy um, and you want to use those to power the servers, you can just connect the energy from that mod directly to the server rack. You don't need to go through a, a computer case or a power contributor. And that's pretty much it. Um, so for the sides, final note, if you do uh, shortcut these basically. So if I say I have uh, one output to the left and one output to the right and have some cables that go around, uh, it's basically just the same as when you have uh, two computers that are directly connected. So weird things may or may not happen. That's up to you to figure out. Right, so that's pretty much it for servers. I think. Yeah, yeah. Thanks as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, you might think, okay, it's limited because I only have one output side, but keep in mind you can extend the network, so the component network with cables or just any block from open computers that, well, is connected with it to each other. Yep. So, with this, you don't so then can have, yeah, very big uh, list of components that are connected to each other. And therefore, it doesn't really matter that much that you only have one initial side. Exactly. So it's just for separating the uh, functionality of the service. But what you do past that single connection point is completely open to you. Okay. I okay. Think. 
that wraps it up for this time. Yeah. And yeah, I think we will come back about the external thing in a later video. Yes. And yeah, I think it's, it's even the next one. So look forward yeah. to it. We say thank you very much for watching. And until next time. See you.